Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to one of the very popular sedans from the Skoda lineup. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Skoda Octavia Ambition. So starting from the front, the front may look pretty similar to a lot of uh, Skoda lineups that you've seen recently. So I recently did a review on the Skoda Kodiak as well. You can click on the pop-up banner out here and you can check a detailed review of the Skoda Kodiak that I did a while back. And also while you are here, also make sure to press the bell icon so that you never miss any video updates from my channel. So continuing from the front, so as I mentioned, it's pretty similar to a Kodiak design. So you get this front grille which is plastic but blacked out. I really like that. There's also a chrome surround around it also and then there are these dual headlight clusters which have been provided though so these dual headlight clusters they have drls and the normal halogen bulbs inside them at the bottom you would find the fog lamps again these are also normal halogen fog lamps there's a bit of more chrome stripping at the front but a very aggressive design and this logo out here which has been i really like by the way the new logo design for the skoda which has a black background and the chrome logo on it and then these creases that go really look very muscular but continuing on the sides the muscular design continues with this big crease or the shoulder crease that goes all the way till the back and also the build quality of the body material is pretty uh, sturdy like when you knock on it you can literally hear the thick metal body now you get 17 inch uh, rims along with power foldable mirrors but without a blind spot warning system but they are auto dimming and there is this chrome surround which is half around those windows i mean it was black it would have been still okay but it still looks nice and also this shiny plastic bits which are like polished ones within the door and then this door handle is pretty big where you can put your uh, your hand inside and then there is still a lot of space but these handles are keyless uh, entry systems relatively plain body at the bottom without any claddings or anything but this whole Skoda Octavia is based on the famous VW's MQB platform which is the modular Quarbo cast 10 platform now that's a 60 billion dollar platform that VW has developed so that's to make the the manufacturing or the designing of the cars pretty easier so the bits between the the wheels uh, remains pretty much similar the chassis bits it's the bits in the front and after the rear wheels that keep changing according to the different models so Audi, Seat and Volkswagen themselves they also adopt the same uh, chassis the uh, MQB platform in fact this very car is based on the Volkswagen's Golf chassis so you know how great this car is going to be but you can also see the the, the height of the car there is quite a bit of ground clearance but also the length of the car is pretty long so like that space is actually converted into the interior space when you sit inside and check it out now in the back the first feature that i would like you all to see is this look at this there's a wiper blade for the rear glass how cool is that now you get um, a mixture of led and uh, halogen uh, tail light cluster at the bottom you would find the parking sensors and also the tail pipes which you wouldn't notice now. So the tailpipes are actually under the bumper. So they are a little behind, but then they are not visible. Another biggest feature that you would get with this car is this, the boot. Now we would like, look at this, how big the boot space is. It says 590 liters of boot space that you get with this car. And it's not just the, the conventional boot, which opens just like from somewhere here, but it's also the glass with which it uh, opens up. So you get so much of space and also the loading area is pretty big. And mind you, this, the cargo separator is removable. And also there are these cool features. Now there are these uh, sort of, uh, I, I don't know, these uh, plastic bits which have been given, which actually stick onto the floor so that if you have any boxes you can put them and make them not fall now that is pretty clever so that though your boxes don't move and also there are various bits and combinations that you can combine because there are tying points and in, inside where you can hang your shopping bags there are also metal uh, 
points where you can tie the nettings there is also a 12 volt uh, power socket in the back and these seats are collapsible in a ratio of 60 to 40 but then the middle uh, handrest in the rear seat is also can be opened so that you can put your golf bags in case you play a lot of golf then you can put that also or otherwise you can completely collapse the seats uh, and the space after that is super huge i mean like if you remove this parcel separator like i, I don't know you can literally fit a bike inside a sedan and all because this boot opens pretty big there is fair bit of uh, lip which i would like to mention there is also a plastic scruff plate which has been provided so that you don't damage your bumpers but all in all it's one of the biggest boot space that you would find in any sedans because the boot door is so big including the rear glass it's pretty heavy also and then that which is why you don't have electronically foldable one but there is this uh, handle which has been provided which you have to pull and <coughs> yeah you have to close that now on the inside everything is completely blacked out so either you would get like a dark gray sort of uh, color or the black screens that you see out here or the black plastic trim so let's start off with the basic quality of the material so you get uh, soft touch plastics everywhere which is pretty good like you know even wherever you see like at the bottom also you would find soft touch plastics everywhere there has been the quality plastic which has been used and also this plastic gray color uh, trim which has been inserted along with the chrome handles and there's also this small detailing around the chrome detailing which has been given around the ac vents and and you know on the steering and on the spokes and everywhere so starting off from the dashboard first thing you get the conventional uh, uh, speedometer and uh, the rpm counter on the, on both the sides along with a small screen because this is the ambition uh, version which is why you get the smaller screen in the middle but it's not that small it's, i feel it's just enough and it's a very clear screen with a lot of functions that you can uh, check out and you can change like your fee, uh, trip details your vehicle status there is also uh, the media controls and all of that you can uh, check out on the screen and make them uh, 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 visible on your screen while driving coming to the steering wheel now steering wheel is telescopic and tilt uh, so you can manually adjust it there is a lever given out here and on the steering wheel itself it's pretty big and you know it's got this thumb rest which is pretty easier to you know uh, uh, grip also and on your right side you would find the dials to control the the dashboard screen so you can change all the options from there on, on your left side you would find the infotainment controls which are pretty easy and straightforward to use but there is the normal cruise control but there is a stick as you know again it was there in the kodiak also and in this car also you would find the cruise control lever which has been given at the back so you have to get used to the turning signal that along with that there is the cruise control which has been provided now i'll be making a detailed video about how these features work in the next one so make sure to check that video out also i'll be covering the infotainment screen and also the the dashboard uh, multi information display and also how to use the cruise control so make sure to check that out which is why you need to subscribe so that you don't miss any video updates see it's pretty useful doing in the octavia you get the a, a sunroof but this roof is pretty huge i mean this is again one of the biggest i've seen uh, in the, it's not actually a panoramic sunroof but just a normal sunroof but it it extends all the way till the rear passenger somewhere in the middle and it also opens up that much as well now in terms of storage in the front you can put one and a half liters of bottle and some more storage that you can find and also there's this nice sort of carpet lining inside it in the rear doors you can put a half a liter of bottle again they are also covered with the the carpet material and uh, other storage also include under the dashboard like under the infotainment screen you would get a small storage to put your phones and also there are cup holders out here uh, so the cup holders they have this rubber uh, material at the bottom so that you don't uh, spill your drinks but then the the cup holders i found them a little bit shallow so that you know it uh, uh, taller cups may may somewhat you know spill over but still all right i mean 
it's not that bad because you get this gripping uh, the rubber material at the bottom which will grip your drink and there is also a cool glove box and which is uh, the glove box is also cooled so you uh, there's this dial which you can adjust so that you can if you put any drinks you can keep it cool there is also an sd card inside the glove box and the glove box space is also pretty big enough and then there is this center console the handrest and that has all right bit of storage where you can put half a liter of water there is one more storage next to the steering wheel under on the left side where you can put maybe your wallet or something but and again also the phones you can put and also the dashboard is relatively flat so you can put a lot of materials onto it and because it grips so the chances of anything falling from it is pretty rare the seats are fabric seats with this design in them you know what i just prefer the fabric seats for some reason because during the summers they don't get heated so this is just a nice bit of you know the the material to be used and they are soft enough for longer journeys and they are all manually adjustable the driver and the passenger so it's eight way adjustable and there is also the lumbar support coming to the infotainment screen the infotainment screen is an 8 inch lcd touch screen and somewhat it looks very familiar to the VW Golf because obviously it's been borrowed from a lot of bits have been borrowed from that car so but the system in all is pretty smooth and pretty nice to use you know like the features and everything and this has the gesture control but not the 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 way where you swipe and you can control but if you just uh, raise your hand uh, in front of the screen then you would see all the options otherwise they would just hide down the options that you get are pretty varied your radio media phone even the air conditioning controls are inside the touch screen so you can use both either the manual dials which have been given at the bottom or you can use the touch screen so it's a two way thing in case one of it stops then you can use the other one so uh, the, the 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 there are various settings that you can do from your uh, screen itself so there are mood lightings in the door and also under the under the floor so the those lights can be changed in terms of color and also the intensity the brightness intensity can be controlled through the screen again a detailed uh, video i'll be making on how to use this screen in my next video so just make sure probably it will be popping up out here or once i upload it i'll be putting a link in the comment section also so yeah in terms of that is pretty simple there is no navigation but again there is apple carplay now coming to in terms of connectivity you would get uh, apple carplay android auto there is also mirror link there is also usb port there is also sd card there is so many ways with which you can just connect so uh, a lot of type of media onto the uh, the system given out here so there is no navigation and that's a smart way of not investing into the navigation system because let's be honest we have android auto and the carplay with which you can connect a lot of uh, uh, systems and also you can use the maps directly from the phones itself but uh, in terms of usage and familiarity of the screen it's pretty easy like the moment you step in it's going to be very easy to just navigate around the infotainment system the air conditioning controls are manual and also you can control it through the screen itself so they are pretty straightforward aircon system is a dual zone uh, aircon system and also there is uh, the vent in the back for the rear passenger also but that's about it and there there is just the flow which you can regulate in the back there is the parking ticket which you can put out here so there is a clip provided for that and that comes pretty handy especially in uae so it's unusual spot where you would find your door locking button so it's given out here in the center console at the bottom there is also the auto engine start stop feature which has been the button for which has been given out here and then there is also the parking sensor button which has been provided out here now this car comes with one camera reversing system and the output from that system is pretty decent enough i would say also you get the wide angle option also in case you are in a tight spot the accelerator pedal is a little inside and the brake pedal is a little raised now while driving i i got i had to get a little used to that fact because it's somewhere raised and then you know you have to get used to and th there's this constant pivoting that you have to do with your foot so as to you know make sure you press the brake pedal and also the dead pedal is a little raised so your legs have a little bit of uncomfortable 
position now again i can just adjust the seats but again that's still a little race in 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 my personal opinion previously i had mentioned about the length of the car and this is where the space has been used like look at this there is so much of leg space and also there is so much of headroom also even though the car has a sloping roof line yet there is ample of space here and mind you these seats are in my driving position and i am almost like 5'11 so my, my legs are pretty long that way and then for 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 that setting to have so much of uh, leg room it's pretty fantastic even under the seats you can put your legs and can easily slide during long longer journeys but there is this one transmission tunnel which has been provided so for the middle passenger even though the seats are flat and even the backrest is flat it's not that big so it's not going to be an issue for longer journeys also there is a uh, cup holders out here and also the handrest which you can use the seats overall are pretty comfortable and the door cards in the back are made out of normal plastic and not the soft touch plastic you would find soft touch plastic at a few places where you place your hands but apart from that it's just normal plastic door cards which have been provided and they have a half a liter of uh, bottle storage that you can put along with the mood lighting again which has been provided and can be controlled from the infotainment screen there's also the pockets in the seat there is uh, two usb ports in the back also for charging along with uh, a, a small storage i don't know you can put uh, your phone the air conditioning uh, vents in the back now because the rear glass is uh, super huge but it is slanting but as a result of that the rear view mirror uh, while you are in the driving seat the visibility tends to be a little uh, lesser than the usual even though the glass is big this car comes with eight speaker music system and it sounds pretty good so the skoda octavia ambition comes with a 1.4 liter tiny petrol turbocharged four cylinder inline engine that produces 148 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque now you may ask this engine may be a little underpowered compared to this car but then this car weighs just over 1250 kilogram so it's pretty excellent i mean i am pretty surprised with the way this engine has been performing or delivering the power because it's pretty smooth and this uh, this engine is mated to a a seven speed dsg gearbox and that is fantastic the shifts are pretty crisp and pretty smooth i mean you wouldn't even feel a slightest amount of jerk or anything the only real uh, complaint will be that there is a throttle lag when you initially press it so like whenever you are getting out of the junction and you want the power to be delivered it takes a little while again that's a turbo lag which is different thing but then there is slight bit of delay in the response from the throttle but again if you put it into the sport mode which this car has the normal and the sport mode so if you put it in that the the, the response improves fairly uh, well like you know it will be responding to the your your right foot quite quickly what happens is when i put it in the sport mode the rpm tends to stick around for a longer time at the the and also it tends to hold up the gears and the rpm wondering that maybe i may want to go up higher or i am going down but it takes a little while to judge on you know deciding whether to go down or shift up and also to lower the rpm i think if you want something fun and peppy from the engine and the gearbox then you should put it in the sport mode and just drive it but otherwise it's pretty uh, fantastic in a day-to-day -day operations it, it the, the engine delivers uh, an economy of uh, anywhere between 15 to 15.5 although the claimed average is around uh, 19 kilometers per liter but then you can get closer to that if you drive really well and this is pretty good from a car this big but then a very important point that i want to highlight or uh, on is the, is the price of this car so the ambition so there are four models that you get the the active the ambition there is style and then there is lnk this particular model is an ambition model and this comes at 66,000 dirhams and i mean let me be honest a car this big 
and with so many features loaded 66,000 is a fairly decent bargain and I am not saying just because I want to convince you but it, it genuinely is a pretty excellent car with very good build quality also the the, the NVH levels are pretty low because of the way the car has been made like thick body materials good amount of uh, uh, cladding and uh, which all adds up to the the lower nvh levels also there is quality for sure the steering wheel has a bit of a softness to it but there is enough of feedback from the system and also it's pretty light that way but it's also got the weight to it so you always know what is going on at the wheels while you are turning the suspension is on the softer side of it so as to give you the comfort but as a result of that what has happened is, is the car has slight bit of roll now there, there are torsion bars that control the 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 sudden roll but then there is slight bit of evidence of roll when you are trying to you know maneuver sharp turns or also the car keeps and also because of the softer suspension there is also something called as the squatting which is when you suddenly accelerate or brake there is squatting which the car does now that is because again to do with the softer suspension but it's not going to be a big deal let me be honest because it's not like a big something where you have to be really concerned about but it's just the thing like you know if you are were to take this car on an everyday routine i mean that's not an issue and the brakes work pretty well except for the pedal which has been slightly raised up then the accelerator pedal but again then you will get used to that but overall if you ask me this car is just fantastic it's super comfortable on a longer journeys and it's it's got everything i mean you can literally just go on a longer journey and still be comfortable in this car now in the safety department you get seven airbags two for the front passenger and the driver one knee airbag for the driver there is also two side airbags there are two curtain airbags and also there is abs brake assist and also child isofix points and also tire pressure monitoring system if you are really thinking of buying a five seater sedan then this is a pretty excellent choice trust me because you get loads of boot space ample of quality inside loaded with the tech that you need in an everyday use there is carplay there is auto android auto there is bluetooth there's so many things which 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 are going to make your life easier when you are traveling on a longer distance or in an everyday traffic jam or wherever it's also fuel efficient so as a result of that all, all i would say is if you are thinking then make sure to just try this car if not buying it because when you try it, trust me you are going to be impressed with this car that is pretty much it for this video give it a thumbs up if you've liked it and if you want to subscribe to my channel then click here and if you feel like watching more videos from my channel or my other reviews then you can click here until we meet next time bye bye and take care